Thank you so much. It was very interesting when I was in, uh, in Warsaw, Rachel Kite received um, an award of Climate Leader of the Year. And she wasn't there in the first week, so I took the award on her behalf. So actually, I'm also glad to be here today uh, addressing at, at the conference. Um, Minister Juma Patterson, Vice Minister Hogeveen, members of the Diplomatic Corps, colleagues, friends, it's an honor for the bank to be here uh, joining this conference. We all have another privilege to uh, address the conference this Thursday, so my uh, remarks this morning will be brief. Let me start with a brief social experiment. How many of you were in The Hague of Hanoi? Any hands up? A few of us. Well, thank you so much for being part of that movement of driving this agenda from the beginning. And from those of you who are not there in The Hague and Hanoi, welcome on board to drive this journey uh, going forward. Three years ago, <clears throat> when um, Mr. Hogeveen uh, hosted the conference in The Hague, we had an opening speaker, Andrew Steer, at that time my colleague at the World Bank, now the president of the World Resource Institute. And he started his opening remarks with a sort of a thought experiment. He said, imagine the year 2050. Imagine you're a local farmer in Africa. You have basically two trajectories. One of demise, your yields will go down, you will become food insecure given climate change is one trajectory. We now know the data. Globally, 16% of yields are expected to drop. In Africa alone, 28%. Or, he said, there is another trajectory. That same imaginary farmer, smallholder farmer in Africa, could follow and implement climate with agricultural practices. He said, that's the journey, that's the message for the conference in The Hague. Well, actually, a few months later, I met that imaginary farmer. Where? in Western Kenya, in Kisumu. There was a small village, a program which was launched during the Hague Conference. There was John Obomo and his wife, Claire. John Obomo was a, is a smallholder farmer, and he implemented a particular program, um, in this case, supported by the World Bank. Very simple, very basic. Mulching, tree planting, intercropping, the basic stuff you normally need to do anyway. And it doubled his yields. It also made his plot much more resilient to climate shocks. And it, the third pillar was he received carbon payments. Why? Because carbon was stored in the soil. So this imaginary triple win was implemented in the field. And when we headed to South Africa in 2011, and when, when I met uh, Minister Juma Patterson, who was preparing for the Durban conference, it was clear that agriculture should be part of the climate solution. And it was under Minister Juma Patterson's leadership where you, Madam Minister, you convened ministers of agriculture from the African continent here in Johannesburg before Durban. And the ministers of agriculture, they got the point. They said, well, climate smart agriculture is the way to go. We commit to change our own programs on the ground in our own borders. But at the same time, we want to have agriculture being included in the climate convention. South Africa hosted that in 2011, never happened before. Agriculture was always blocked as being part of the solution. In Durban, though, in December 2011, for the first time in history, agriculture made its inroad into the climate convention. Unfortunately, the next year in Doha, and the following year in Warsaw, two weeks ago, agriculture dropped off the agenda again. And we understand why. I think you understand why. Most negotiators are from environmental uh, ministries. Nothing wrong with them. But I think they need to have the knowledge and the data and, the, and the, the experience which you collectively have. We need to bring that knowledge and data to the negotiators. We from the World Bank, we are strongly convinced that agriculture should be part of the climate deal in 2015 in Paris. But at the same time, we cannot wait. We cannot wait for the negotiators to pick up their act to get agriculture on the footage which it deserves. We need action on the ground right now. So at the World Bank, we are committed to drive our own portfolio through a climate lens. Why? Because we believe that climate change and development are intrinsically linked. We cannot achieve our mission of ending extreme poverty or boosting shared prosperity if we do not address the climate change challenge. And climate smart agriculture is, in our view, an integral part of that. 
At the same time, we as the World Bank, we're a small player in the broader field. We cannot do this alone. We are very grateful for partners sitting around the table here in the room. And we're very eager to drive with you this Climate Smart Agriculture Alliance. Why? Because this alliance should steer financing, should steer policies in the direction of climate smart agriculture pr uh, practices to replicate what John Obama, this farmer in the field in Kenya, to replicate it at scale, not just in Western Kenya, but across the continent, in North and South, in developed and developing countries. And as a very uh, distinguished colleague and close friend here in the room, Mark Menes from the United States government said, this climate smart agriculture hopefully will be launched here today, but see it as a metaphor of a mission to the moon. The first conference in The Hague and the second conference in Hanoi were the rocket boosters sending us off. Now here in Johannesburg, we're truly, um, we believe, on the launch path around orbit. And I think we all have an extraordinary chance to make this mission to bring this mission to the next level. I think that's the task for this particular meeting here in, uh, in Johannesburg for the three days, to develop the vision, the roadmap for the climate smart agriculture, to develop what success looks like. And then, as Mr. Hogevain and Dumat Patterson, the minister said, hopefully we can launch the climate smart agriculture in full fledged this September during the Leader Summit in New York. I'm not sure whether you want to be part of the rocket booster or driving the, the steering wheel of the space shuttle. I think we're both here today in the next few days. And I think this is a very exciting conference. And then again, I welcome you here also on the behalf of the World Bank. And thank you again, Madam Minister, for hosting this conference. Thank you so much.